I said, mines are worse than drone strikes. And his response seems to be that I think that drones aren't weapons and don't hurt people. So he's like, did you know drone strikes cause explosions? And I'm like, holy shit, really? Oh, he did 9-11. It's like, bro, we don't know that. Our intelligence is dog shit. Okay. No, wait, first of all, we have the best intelligence apparatus in the world by far. Second of all, he took credit for it. What do you mean we don't know that? He was the second in command. He said that he did. It's not like a vibe. Do we really know that 9-11 even happened? US intel, uh, very unreliable. What do you think about Dark Brandon drone striking Al-Qaeda leader? U.S. drone strike kills Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in Afghanistan. Uh, I, yeah, let me see. When uh, this happened today, one of the, wait, one of the plotters behind 9-11? Are they making that up? Wait, this was the guy back 15 years ago? Is he like 800 years old now? Did, what, what did they do? They drone strike his fucking retirement home? Okay. Second in command to Bin Laden. I say it's based. I don't care. Any info on if civilians were harmed? Well, if civilians were harmed, it's not based. I retract that. The state successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan that killed the Emir of Al Qaeda, Iman al Zawiri. You know, Zawiri was uh, Bin Laden's leader, he was with him all the, the whole time. I know I've talked about this before, but I'm generally a little bit more. Um, I'm generally willing to give a little bit more leeway to um, Biden when it comes to drone strikes because he's really ramped down the number of uh, drone strikes since he became president. Oh, this is just U.S. military strikes, not even just drone strikes. Like things got cut down significantly, um, which is which is good, you know, which is which is good. Oh, Bashar al-Assad, Bashir sounds cooler. After taking office, Biden set up a new system requiring White House approval for any strikes outside active war zones and later published Trump's loose rules that enabled so many civilian massacres. Whereas Trump's oversaw more than 1,600 air and artillery strikes in Iraq and Syria during his first 11 months, Air Wars reports just four during Biden's term so far. That's pretty, um, that's pretty based, man. 1,600 air and artillery strikes down to four in a comparable time period. That's just in Iraq and in, in, Sir in um, Syria, though, not including Somalia. Strikes in Somalia fell from roughly 75 last year to fewer than 10 this year with no civilian casualties. In Yemen, annual total dropped from 18 to maybe 4. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, it's an improval, yeah. Definitely a big improvement. Yeah, well. He was his number two man, his deputy at the time the terrorist attack 9-11. He was deeply involved in the planning... And when one of those drone strikes killed a bunch of staff workers. Yeah, we covered that. The um the the attack killed like a bunch of uh, innocents and like some fucking kids too. And the uh, the military the the Pentagon like strike approval process was like, uh he's got a he's driving a white car white car uh white car tango uh look white car looking a little sus sussy uh sus tango uh sus tango Delta Roger Fox uh confirm target no no time to confirm target. Uh, almost finished loading the three children out of the, uh, out of the, uh, uh the, the back of the white car. Uh, d deploy the strike, you know? Yeah, I remember that. 9-11. One of the most responsible for the attacks that murdered 2,977 people on American soil. For say decades, he was a mastermind hard. behind attacks against Americans, including the bombing of the USS Cole in 2000, which killed 17 American sailors and wounded dozens more. He played a key role, a key role in the bombing of U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, killing 224 and wounding over 4,500 others. He carved a trail of murder and violence against American citizens, American service members, <clears throat> American diplomats, and American interests. And since the United States delivered justice to Bin Laden 11 years ago, Zawahiri has been a leader of Al-Qaeda, the leader. From hiding... Wait, I'm looking at your chat. Not even trying to hide the fact that he's reading off teleprompter. I mean, yeah, politicians are always reading off teleprompters, like, all the time, when they're doing any kind of press briefing. I mean, he's got the COVID right now. I don't know if he got, like, um, a facelift or something. I feel like he looks different. People were calling that out.
conspiracy theorists were saying he got replaced with clone or something, but I don't know. Maybe it's just a consequence of the medicine that he's been given. He's also, like, super old. He coordinated Al-Qaeda's branches and all around the world, including setting priorities for providing operational guidance that call for and inspired attacks against U.S. targets. He made videos, including in recent weeks, calling for his followers to attack the United States and our allies. Whoa, gay. Now, justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. People around the world no longer need to fear the vicious and determined killer. The United States continues to demonstrate our resolve and our capacity to defend the American people against those. Okay, yeah, we, we know what he's going to say. I feel like in a pretextual sense, we have a decent justification for drone strikes in Afghanistan because, you know, the Afghanistan government, the, 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 the government was our ally and then we left and they immediately lost to the Taliban. So, you know, I feel like you could do this kind of like, well, yeah, we're, you know, we don't recognize the legitimacy of Taliban rule in Afghanistan and, you know, the, the, the embers of the government still smolder and we support that and blah, blah. It's not quite the same as attacking like a full sovereign. This stuff gets tricky. Bosh, that's semantics. I mean, it's all semantics. It's really about like justifications. Can we just not do drone strikes? I mean, when if it's actually the number two guy behind 9-11 and no civilians were killed, I think that's pretty okay, to be honest. I'm okay with that. That seems okay to me. That seems all right. I wonder if there's any way to really find out the impact the drones have on, like, total casualties, right? Because obviously, like, the downsides with drones is that you can do them anywhere, everywhere, all the time with total impunity. You don't need to commit any troops to the ground, which means that it's really easy to do drone strikes without any kind of, like, major commitment. But you also don't have to put any, any boots on the ground. I just, I wonder if we didn't have drones, would we, would, would, like, if drones just didn't exist, would our government be like, yeah, dude, we totally need, like, 10,000 troops in Afghanistan and Syria and Iraq? And, like, would, would it be, like, in, in the absence of drone warfare, would we feel the need to compensate for it with traditional occupation? Or would we just leave it be and the addition of drones is only like a net negative? I don't know if there's a way. I feel like I lean towards the net negative. I, I think I think in my opinion, if it weren't for drones, government officials would just be like, eh, you know, like, eh, not worth the, you know, but because we have drones, it's actually way easier to do, you know, a lot of this stuff. And, and, and otherwise they wouldn't go for it. I, I think that's just... um. An opinion I have. Drones should be treated how mines were in the 90s. Nah, I don't think you can compare drones to mines. Mines are like a horrendously immoral, anti-civilian thing. Drones have a relatively, in terms of like types of military engagement, drones are less uh, collateral damagey. They are? Yeah. Most drone attacks kill civilians, though? Yeah, but it's, it's nothing like mines. I mean, most military engagement, you sure about that? Y y yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If you think that drone strikes and mines compare in the negative impacts to civilian populations, you need to look up what mines have done to countries that have had them dropped on. It's not even remotely comparable, you know? Not even, it, like, yeah, it, like, you know, for decades, like, whole massive swaths of territory are just, like children are getting their legs blown off like they like no go zone i mean it's it's like it's like chemical warfare in terms of like the indiscriminate destruction that you lay in an area hey you know who uses mines a bunch these days uh russians do russians love sowing mines they do that shit they do it whenever they're uh, salty whenever they're losing a territory and they have to retreat they uh spike drop a f ton of mines everywhere Real tiny ones, too, like the kinds that'll blow a leg off but won't usually kill you, like low fragmentation, high explosive mines. They, Russians love doing that shit. Yeah, toe poppers. They literally booby trap dead civilians. Why people call them orcs, right? I mean, they're insane. Have an unexploded mines made miles of land unlivable in some place? Yeah, 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 100%. Um, wasn't that, that's still a thing in like the Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, just uh, just the whole there, you know, yeah, there there's still uh there are still mines. Indochina, yeah. Mines remaining in in Vietnam? I guess we'll start there. Is there a way of It's estimated that more than 3 million landmines 
unidentified explosive objects, and cluster munitions remain buried in Vietnam. Since 1975, over 40,000 Vietnamese have died from these deadly remnants of war, and over 60,000 have been injured. That's just Vietnam. Right, let's take a look at Laos. Laos. Legacy of 80 million unexploded U.S. bombs. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, it's not a defending drone strikes thing. I'm only saying that, like, landmines are, like, a uniquely thing. Yang was just 22 and burning rubbish near his village in the province of Jiankun in his uh, northeast Laos when a bomb blast tore off one of his eyelids, his top lip and an ear, mutilated one of his arms, and left him with severe scarring from the waist up. I remember burning the garbage, but after the explosion, I was unconscious for two weeks. I felt extreme pain all over my body. I still feel pain always. His wounds were not caused by a modern-day conflict, but by the remnants of a war that is waged for more than 40 years. Or, sorry, uh, more than 40 years ago, and is still destroying lives in the small Southeast Asian nation. Some 80 million unexploded bombs are scattered across the country. The deadly legacy of what became known as America's secret war in Laos, a CIA-led mission during the Vietnam War. Yeah, 10 unexploded munitions for every single, like, citizen of Laos. During the Yugoslav War, the country of Bosnia had landmines covering um, about 2.1% of the borders within the country. Jesus Christ. Why doesn't the U.S. do anything to fix this? Well, I mean, we're the U.S. We suck. Though, to be fair, I don't think most countries are willing to do, like, reparations of that kind. I, want, I don't know what we could really do, though. Demining a country like that. I, like, I, I, I mean, do you just give them a bunch of money? I have no idea what you do. Here's like f half a trillion dollars for demining equipment. And here's also like 100,000 poor American inner city black kids to operate it. Good luck. What are you? Uh, I, I, I have no idea what you could do to, to, to un this situation. Billions would, yeah, no, billions wouldn't cover it. Half a trillion is not even remotely enough. Is there really no way to either disarm or safely set them all off? Nope. There's no, there's no off button for any of this shit. These aren't, these aren't like electric munitions. There's no like pulse that you can put into the ground. A lot of the, these munitions are detonated accidentally, or you literally like throw rocks at them to detonate them. That's it. Like it's a one by one. Yeah. Cause if, cause if they could be easily gotten rid of, they wouldn't be very good mines. Right. Um, yeah, you dig them up or you roll something over them. There is, you can demine. You can demine things, but you can't just, like, clear a clear an acre. Wait, didn't we look on stream once at that, like, sick-ass demining tool? Wait, hold on. Anti-mine vehicle. Didn't we, like, it shoots, like, a sick... Yeah, this thing. Not worth the mines, but... That costs a ton of money. Yeah, I don't think the villagers of Laos are going to be able to afford this, but... It's it's ba it basically fires an explosive rope, yeah the C four cum rope, a, like high concussive that knocks out all the mines. That's a mine clearing thing. Uh, this is a mine clearing thing. Yeah, there's no reason to use this against personnel. Ten best mine clearing. What's the American one? There we go. Did you know China actually didn't threaten to shoot down Pelosi? Well, wasn't it a Chinese official who said that they would have to forcibly deter Pelosi and failing that, they would have to bring her down or something? I forget the exact words, but they basically said that. Yeah, Chinese state media, yeah. Not an official? I mean, being a part of state media kind of makes you yeah i guess not technically an official but like you know 
I think it's fair to I think it's fair to consider that. Like it's like not not official, you know. Either way, it's not like an official Chinese uh, position or whatever. I think a big problem with clearing mines is also that um, the type of mine clearing device that you need to use changes depending on the type of mine. So mines that are just like a little bit of high explosive that are meant to blow a leg off, I think these are really good for that because those explosives can't really destroy machines like this. The little the little mines that just get like laid everywhere and if you step on them like your lower half disintegrate, like that won't do anything to one of these, I think. But if they have mines in there that are meant to be like anti-tank or more, um, yeah, yeah, more like anti-vehicle or whatever or anti-ordinance, like that could fuck up one of these. And then, like, you're out a very expensive piece of equipment. What is this? This is Somebody said this is the one I used in the Marines. Oh, yeah, the camera. Oh, but this is different from the uh, Russian one. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit... Hit the button. Yeah. Okay. So, you might... So... Okay, here's a quiz for people in chat who are looking at this. Think of the design of the cum rope launcher. What about its design gives you the bad feels? Is there something about this design that gives you a sinking feeling about the prospect of mine clearing? The answer, it, this is a very expensive piece of equipment. I mean, this is like a modern thing. It only clears roads. That's the thing. When you drop cluster mines, which cost no money, by the way, um, everywhere, like they get everywhere, they get in the bushes, they get out in the in the the farms, they get in the tr literally in the trees. They get everywhere. Even our like expensive advanced piece of demining equipment just clear roads. So this stuff is meant for clearing mines that are in like obstructing our military. This is not good for making a country safe to live in again. Does that make any sense? Like even with all of our strength, this is just making sure our guys have a clear path. And by the way, this is like a real like, this is a real thing people have to deal with. Like, in some countries, they will literally say, like, stay on the road. The road has been demined. We don't know if the ditches on the side have. That's a real thing. Like, that's an actual consideration people have to make. Like, yeah, the road has been cleared, so stay on the road. Because you have no idea. It's uh, Hundreds and hundreds of miles of countryside road. You have no idea. Um, millions of unexploded landmines all over the place. It's It's just, it's just incredibly... Difficult. Because it can't be done. Um, Sinuous psychosis. Uh, you, you can't mass detonate a mine with like a seismic pulse. It's, it'd be cool if we could, but... Approximately 23 million mines in, in Egypt? Yeah, it's just... Uh, why not? Because we just can't. It just, just doesn't work that way. Mines are usually, uh, they usually detonate when force is put on them from above, not when they, like, vibrate or whatever. Like, you, you step on them, you know? The unforgiving fields of Egypt's western deserts. For centuries, they had provided a means to life for low- Give them a bomber plane, but instead of dropping rocks- or instead of dropping bombs, they drop rocks to set off the mines. Uh, yeah, get the- uh, g using advanced algorithms. AI learning to calculate the flight path of the uh, U.S. bombers that dropped mines over Laos 50 years ago so we can retrace their steps with a new bomber and drop rocks at the exact same velocity and direction and hit all the mines. Local herders, but in recent decades, a curse for those who've dared cross them. Beneath the dry lands lie an estimated 16 million landmines and unexploded so we're talking munitions. About landmines a horrifying civilians. legacy so of World War II battles at Al Alamein, 
more than 65 years Ooh. ago, still being felt today. Oh. It was one of these munitions that Abdullah Shahabi picked up while he was one day farming. The explosion claimed his arm and maimed his face, shattering his life and making most of his daily tasks unbearably difficult. Every day I see people's reactions when they see my arm and my face. They get scared. This affects me greatly. I've struggled to find a job and earn a living. I'm only able to work because my friend hired me out of compassion. According to the Egyptian government, World War II era landmines and munitions have victimized nearly 8,000 people. And despite the Egyptian military's demining efforts, the government is in need of new technologies and financial assistance in clearing large swaths of lands. It estimates that demining the Al Alamein battlefields alone could cost $20 billion. Not only are the minefields a humanitarian era, facts about landmines from landmine free towards a landmine free world. Oh, that's cool. Look. Countries around the world affected by mines, and then you have mines actively used by both state and non-state armed groups, and it's like only Russia. Russia's like the only country on here where, where the government will actively use mines today. <laughs> Thanks, Russia. Not the only, we've got, you know, more, but, you know, you know. Russia developed mines for the Afghan war that look like children's toys to attract civilians. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember this. Thanks, Russia. Uh, PFM1 training mine, um, distinguishable from the live version of the Cyrillic letter Y, uh, yeah. The shape and bright color is attractive to children, inspiring claims they were deliberately designed to look like a toy. This was denied by the Soviets, and while the mines did endanger children, there's no evidence to suggest they were designed to look appealing. I believe them. These are just casualties from mines in, uh, 2010. Estimated there are around 110 million landmines in the ground right now. Mines cost between three and thirty dollars, but the cost of removing them is three hundred to a thousand. Cost of removing all existing mines be fifty to a hundred billion. That'd be a that'd be a good project for like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos to do. I think more than four thousand two hundred people, of whom forty two percent are children. Remarkable coincidence there. Have been falling victim to landmines and ERWs annually in many of the countries affected by post um, war and post conflict situations around the world. According to Landmine Monitor, the number of landmine and UXO casualties was 11,700 in 2002 and 4,286 in 2011. Oh yeah, mines are wicked cheap. I mean, yeah, well, mines are super cheap. It's literally just like an explosive and a weight sensor. I mean, there's not... Yeah, it's, it's very, very simple. Mimes kill or may more than 5,000 annually. One... Ooh. One D-miner is killed and two injured for every 5,000 successfully removed mines. They said there were 80 million in Laos. At those numbers, that would be, that would be over 10,000 D-miners killed. Like 13,000 D-miners killed, to clear all that. 16,000? Yeah. The areas mostly affected by landmines, Egypt, Angola, Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq, China, Cambodia, Mozambique, Bosnia, Croatia, Somalia. I think a lot of the explosives in Laos are unexploded munitions, not mines. Am I, am I correct in that? A ton of the, um, yeah, a lot, most, I think the vast majority, yeah, like bombs that just didn't blow up. Because we, we dropped a lot of bombs on Laos. So I guess that's some good news, because um, unexploded munitions aren't as sensitive to just killing people as mines are. Because mines have active sensors or like triggers that you step on, and unexploded munitions, it varies. <laughs> Over 200 and, yeah, it's because of cluster bombs, dude. Over 270 million cluster bombs dropped by the U.S. on Laos, but cluster bombs fucking suck. They're shit. Like, a lot of those bombs just don't explode. Butterfly mines being used right now in Ukraine. Hey, They're back! Russia using war crime Cold War munition. Oh, uh, well, that's one fewer $3 mine. It only took risking two guys' lives. A lot of these mines don't have shrapnel effect to keep them cheap. Do you know why a lot of these mines don't have shrapnel? It's not to keep them cheap, actually. It's to make them expensive for the other side. They don't put shrapnel because they don't want to kill people with the landmines. 
Um, a lot of the landmines are just regular high explosives with minimal shrapnel, and the purpose of that is because they want to blow a leg off and create a casualty that's not a death. A death just means a corpse has to be buried and a flag has to be presented at like a you know, widow's house or whatever. But uh, an injury, somebody whose leg is blown off but they're still alive, that's like a massive expense to the military. Like you have to take care of them for months and years and like they're a burden to society and blah blah blah. You know, in a monetary sense. Creating wounded soldiers, are they not also for damaging vehicles? Those butterfly mines can't really damage vehicles, they're for killing people. It's like mustard gas? Yeah, 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 it's, it's about, yeah, it's about, um, injuring, not killing. Um, shrapnel kills, though. You know, the metal comes out fast as a bullet, gets you, you know, that's it. There's always gonna be some shrapnel. The metal casing around the explosive turns into shrapnel, but, you know, they don't have, like, little fragmentation pellets. Laos already built on top of bombs and even uses them as decorations. Hell yeah. Well, you know, when life gives you lemons, they say, some big bombs. Those are not, I guess these might be the shells of cluster munitions. I don't, I don't know if cluster munition shells get this big. This might just be a regular bomb shell. No, if it was a regular bomb sh no, I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever. Those are active. I have to assume these aren't still active. You know, like someone's got to run up there with a hammer and f***ing detonate half the town square with, with, you know, like three tons of unexploded <laughs> ordnance. So yeah, Pelosi uh, single-handedly stopped World War III. Good for her, huh? It's a shame. There were, there were the Vanguard people wanted to talk to me, but they're not getting back to me over email. But also, I took forever to respond, so that's kind of on me. I'm in the mood to be a, a Taiwanese, Ukrainian, and Kosovan uh, a, a nationalist with some tankies. Kosovan? Kosovan? I still don't understand the Pelosi thing. Oh, God, just like a, a recognizing Taiwan by visiting as a high-profile dignitary threatens Chinese one-China policy so they get really mad. I think, uh, I think it, can be, it can be summarized by this picture that I stole from NCD. Xi Jinping going through the reserve of, uh, of uh, PRC copium, the ROC copium. Now we're on the uh, property of the East India Company. Very good. Why can't there be two Chinas? There aren't two Chinas. There's one China, and then there's Taiwan. It's such an esoteric meme. It's good. It's not unprecedented. Newt Gingrich did the same thing in 1997. Yeah, that was like 25 years ago, though. I mean, yeah, it's been a while. One Taiwan policy. Yeah. China's going to do military exercises in response. Yeah, um, the warmongering, brinksmanship practicing Americans have prompted China to defensively hold live fire military exercises that just coincidentally happened to encircle the island of Taiwan. I don't, why can't the West stop with the with the posturing and the warmongering, placing Taiwan in the center of this network of live fire demonstrations? The Chinese Navy is going to conduct lower left firing area specifically targets their internal waters too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look how close it gets. Like literally, they're gonna have Chinese warships blowing shit up like within sight of the Taiwanese coastline. Like we're not touching you, you know. There was a new Nazi manifesto detailing how to destroy infrastructure and was inspired by that one lady who helped starve Sri Lanka. Oh, um, great. And the manifesto is spreading like wildfire on Telegram. Oh, nice. Well, great. They did bomb Taiwan ship during, uh, Taiwanese ship during the Mao era? Hell yeah. If we war against China, do you think we'd win? Uh, leaving nukes off the table, which are kind of like an equalizing force? Yeah, of course. There is only one superpower. Why they fire in perfect parallelograms? Just Chinese discipline. Should the U.S. do something in response to these live firing drills? No. They have swarm drones, though? Nah, I, listen, after the bullshit with Russia, man, I'm full-on American military supremacy. How could we not? We spend more in our military than everyone else combined or whatever. Um, yeah. No, there's only one world military power, and it's us. If you exude, if you, if you exclude nukes. If you include nukes, then, you know, obviously you've got nukes. But you've had, like, there are, like, crazy tanky lefties that have spent the past couple years being like, yeah, America's a paper tiger, now Russia and China are the real big di- And, like, no. 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 Not even close. No. 
Not even remotely. Is China as incompetent as Russia is, though? I guess we won't know until we see, huh? Uh, probably not, no. Not as cool as us, though. A paper tiger with a $800 billion budget. Yeah, baby, we our military is a paper tiger. It's just that the paper is Benjamin's, you know? These other f***s are using paper mache. We're just stacking uh, $100 uh, uh, bills in the shape of a tiger. We Start a war with the U.S. You f***s are about to find out how the world's wealthiest country doesn't provide health care to its citizens. You're going to find out where that money goes. Hmm. I wonder why America doesn't provide for its people. Well, you're about to find out. <sighs> the Bin Laden associate we murked the other day. Do you see the goddamn ninja missile? Holy shit. I saw this a while ago, but I thought it was a meme. I didn't realize it was a real thing. The f sword drone missile. How awesome is that? Oh my god. It's a non-explosive missile. It, it, it's a guided missile that fires from a drone, and when it gets close to its target, it deploys swords from the front, in, like fins. Isn't that rad? It's the coolest shit in the world, dude. There is only one superpower. Hell yeah. For real, it's so stupid? Nah, it's to, um... It's to cut down on civilian death. Because there's no explosive here. So, it, it's like the lowest amount of collateral damage you can get, because you're literally just hitting them with the missile. Like, that's the point. Like, if, if there's an explosive, you can kill people in the area, you know. But with this, it just, whap, hits you. And, you know, you gotta, you gotta respect the unbelievable, like, the technological innovation necessary to ensure that this drone missile literally hits its target. Like, it can't hit around the target. It has to physically collide with a human being. I mean, that's insane. Like... Yeah, fucking Fox, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Bravo, Bravo, you know, um, missile launch from three miles away, and you hit a, a man-sized target directly. That is insane. That is genuinely, genuinely insane. The Vanguard were criticizing you for defending drone strikes? I mean, if, if it's fucking sick-ass ninja drone strikes, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Absolutely. This is too cool. How could I not? I don't even care about the target. Fire these at, like, British orphans. I don't care. L little, little... W w what's, what's their name? Little Tim? Little Timmy? Oliver Twist? Yeah, Oliver Twist. Yeah, just fucking launch 50 of these at, at British orphanages. You know? I don't, I don't care. Just, they're fucking sword missiles. WTF, Vosh Defense, the Drone War. Oh, these are the guys who want to talk to me. Filled. Uh, filed a 11 page handwritten letter to the court detailing the motivations behind his actions in vivid detail. What is this? as unintended consequences even in quote-unquote successful drone strikes and let's in kids at ignorance or truly ign holy shit that's me well this is me from yesterday start from the beginning well i'm not watching the whole thing if they want to talk they can come on my stream they literally emailed me about it ignorant about the collateral damage wrought by drone warfare in countries such as Afghanistan. Uh, let's take a gander here at The Guardian. U.S. airstrikes killed at least 22,000 civilians since 9-11 analyst finds, and that's just airstrikes. Wait, didn't I talk? Wait, didn't I talk about? Didn't I directly, literally show a graph on the drone war? I, yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the standard thing where, like, you'll say, you can say something like, um, I'm glad one of the 9-11 dudes is dead, and they're like, ha. Huh. Are you aware that drone strikes have killed children? W in in the bit where I talk about drone strikes, what wasn't ninety percent of the the me rambling the other day, me talking about the destructive consequences of America's intervention in Laos and like unexploded munitions and mines being laid everywhere? I feel like that whole thing was me being like vehemently anti-war. And there and at, at one point I was like, yeah, I'm gl I guess I'm glad the nine eleven guy got murked, and they're like. <laughs> Vosh Pro MIC. Let's so not go. necessarily all drone written letter to the court detailing. It's, I mean, if you listen to him talk, there was a long period of time when he was awaiting trial that he was out. He was working as a dishwasher, right? Because he couldn't get employment anywhere else. Not that there's anything wrong with being a dishwasher, but they're just saying the dude went from having quite a cushy job to you know, argue that. We, we, the information that we do have on drones is so damning, and we know that we don't even have like the half of it, guys. All the shit that we do, like in via Africa and in you know, Northern Africa and all the places that we're doing shady shit, Central Africa, uh, crazy guys we're, we're killing people all the time civilians i mean 
What? There is no such thing as a safe drone strike. I mean, how many times do you remember? What, what, what do you mean there's no such thing as a safe drone strike? They're drone strikes. Yeah, it's a weapon of war. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, that's that's true. We're just in high school, Gavin. Like weddings being just bombed to smithereens, and and I remember actually, if you would listen back when there was some sense on the Joe Rogan podcast, he would have Shane Smith on, who is not my favorite guy. He's a billionaire. He found advice, but even he would be there, being like, "Joe, listen to me. For every one of these dro uh, drone strikes that we bought, we drop over there. We're just recruiting for ISIS. We're just recruiting for the Taliban. Because I'll tell you what, if some mother haven't I said this." I, yeah, I, I, it's, there's no point in responding because all the arguments they're going to make are going to be like me, are, are, are going to be like, yeah. Less in fact, I think I gave that guy that take, the one who was on Joe Rogan. I think I told him that before he went on. I was like, hey, you should talk about how indiscriminate killing of civilians radicalizes people and gets them to join ISIS. Night where he was discussing this a little bit. I was just casually watching. And to be honest, this really took me aback. <laughs> Um, maybe I shouldn't have been surprised given Vosh's, you know, predictably dog shit takes on foreign policy. <laughs> um, but again, this was beyond the pale to me, and I thought this was worth responding to. Um, so let's take a listen. Justice has been delivered. Vosh not giving us any debate ever again. No, these guys want to come on. I, I emailed them literally earlier today, um, but that's more fun than responding to a video, right? That's way more fun than responding to a video. And this terrorist leader is no more. People around the world no longer need to fear the vicious and determined killer. The United States continues to demonstrate our resolve and our capacity to defend the American people against those. Okay, yeah, we, we know what he's going to say. I feel like in a pretextual sense, we have a decent justification for drone strikes in Afghanistan because, you know, the Afghanistan government, the, 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 the government was our ally and then we left and they immediately lost to the Taliban. So, you know, I feel like you could do this kind of like, well, yeah, we're, you know, we don't recognize the legitimacy of Taliban rule in Afghanistan. And, you know, the, the, the embers of the government still smolder and we support that and blah, blah. It's not quite the same as attacking like a full sovereign. This stuff gets tricky. Bosh, that's semantics. I mean, it's all semantics. It's really about like justifications. Hell yeah, Gally. Um, Where do I say something bad? Can we just not do drone strikes? I mean, when if it's actually the number two guy behind 9-11 and no civilians were killed, I think that's pretty okay, to be honest. I'm okay with that. That seems okay to me. I just like how casually Vosh comes out against trial by jury and like extrajudicial and, and pro extrajudicial killing. It's like we It's the terrorist group that overtook the country. What do we send our police in? Like <clears throat> Sir Sir, is it true that you were the right hand of bin Laden back during 9-11? I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need you to turn around, and put your hands behind your back. You are under arrest. You read read the, the Miranda rights. What what what? <laughs> yeah, just two NYC beat cops, dude. That would be a phenomenal buddy cop movie. You know, like two Joyzy cops. You know, you you have like the plucky like recruit like woman who's just new to the force, and you've got like the grizzled like old joyzy detective or whatever and they're like yeah w one of the guys who did 9 11 we know where he is and they're like oh where where in the bronx is he they're like no he's in kabul <laughs> they're like what oh yeah <laughs> this summer two cops <laughs> get their hands dirty <laughs> yeah the, the, the intercuts you know <laughs> it's just, it's just Oh god, I'm so okay. <laughs> Unironically I watched dude, I watched the fuck out of that. Are you kidding me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh god. Are we gonna say a known terrorist needs to try? Yeah, it's not like yeah, this it's just kind it's kind of inapplicable. If you're like a member of a terrorist group that recently took over a government, it's not that's not real. Like, if he had said something like, we should live and let live, I, I think that would have been a more defensible position. But believing it's okay to just, like, kill members of terrorist groups that have attacked our country, like, like not, like, just random people, like, re like, maybe an informant or whatever, but, like, the main guys, it, like, that's just not really a defensible attitude. What... What country does that? Doesn't like every major hegemon like 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 what what country would do that? Like, 
yeah, these guys killed thousands of our civilians, but we can't kill them because we have to arrest them, even though they're on foreign soil. Uh, it's probably happened. Well, anyway. Wacky. Wacky stuff. We don't know. He didn't have a trial. That's like the whole basis of America, but anyway. What? Wait, we don't know. Wait, didn't he take credit for it? Did... Did... <laughs> that seems all right. I wonder if there's any way to really find out the impact the drones have on, like, total casualties. Wait, I'm about to make an anti-drone take. Are they going to cut it off before I make it, or are they going to, like, rationalize it? Because obviously, like, the downsides with drones is that you can do them anywhere, everywhere, all the time, with total impunity. You don't need to commit any troops to the ground, which means that it's really easy to do drone strikes without any kind of, like, major commitment. But you also don't have to put any, any boots on the ground. I just, I wonder if we didn't have drones, would we, would, would, like, if drones just didn't exist, would our government be like, yeah, dude, we totally need, like, 10,000 troops in Afghanistan and Syria and Iraq? And, like, would, would it be, like, in, in the absence of drone warfare, would we feel the need to compensate for it with traditional occupation? Or would we just leave it be and the addition of drones is only like a net negative? I don't know if there's a way. I feel like I lean towards the net negative. I, I, think, okay. I think in my opinion, if it weren't for drones, the government officials would just be like, eh, you know, like, eh, not worth the, you know, but because we have drones, it's actually way easier to do, um, you know, a lot of this stuff. And, and, and otherwise they wouldn't go for it. I, I think... That's just um wait how wait how are they going to respond to that? I'm actually well, I'm actually really really curious. Hmm. An opinion I have. Drones should be treated how mines were in the 90s. Nah, I don't think you can compare drones to mines. Mines are like a horrendously immoral anti-civilian thing. Drones have a relatively in terms of like types of military engagement. Drones are less collateral damagey. All right, so we got to pause there. Uh, this is insane. Truly, truly. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, are they going to argue that drones are more destructive to civilian populations than mines? Okay. Oh, oh, God. Insane shit. And also just incredibly, incredibly ignorant. Vosh either feigning ignorance or truly ignorant about the collateral damage wrought by drone warfare in countries such as Afghanistan. Uh, let's take a gander here at The Guardian. U.S. airstrikes killed at least 22,000 civilians since 9-11, analyst finds, and that's just airstrikes, so not necessarily all drone warfare. Uh, but let me tell you, a lot of it was drone warfare. And also, I wanted to put up this tweet from Empire Files, which I think actually really uh, accurately kind of addresses the sentiment he's saying here, which is that U.S. drone strikes strikes have killed approximately oh, 900 children around 200 in Afghanistan including the last strike that killed seven kids at once celebrating a rare instance where only the intended target was killed gives support to that broader criminal criminal policy uh, and again i think that's so true just okay us drone strikes have killed approximately 900 children how many people do you how many children do you think die of mines so they're just going to completely ignore the statement because they're they're like, well, you think mines are worse than drones? Well, drones are bad. Like no, like no engagement with the actual like idea there. Just because like every once in a hundred drone strikes, they get the right guy. What? what kind of delusional? I I know these guys live in their own world. The idea that every one in one hundred drones. I know that was like deliberate hyperbole, but like no. Actually, you know, we were we were we were memeing about the ninja drones or whatever. The fact that the US is willing to spend money researching drone tech that's more expensive for us to minimize civilian casualties means that our milit like right like this right here puts us like this is like unironically like ethical military development. This is a lot of money and a lot of tech being put into something that is only beneficial if you're trying to uh reduce uh, collateral damage. Like it's you know, that's Mine deaths rose by 20% in 2020. Yeah, it's, it's, mines are very bad. Landmine casualties exceptionally high. Syria and Afghanistan worst hit. Hey, guys, I, want, I wonder who put these mines in Syria and Afghanistan.
Hmm, Syria. I have. Hmm. It's a bit more. No, no, no. Do they say? Nah, they don't mention it here. Mines kill 1,000 to 2,000 a month. Yeah, and like, it's going to be overwhelmingly civilians. Because a lot, like, mines stay in areas, like, post-conflict for decades and decades and decades. That's global, though? Yeah, but there are only so many drones in the world, right? Like, there's only so much drone warfare happening. Just, m mines are, like, monstrously bad. They're, like, incredibly, like, drones can be used legitimately. Uh, if you, if, if your country is gunning to kill a person or a group of people, drones are probably the lowest civilian casualty method of doing that. Mines are like the highest civilian casualty method of doing that. If you're optimizing for civilian deaths, uh, in, in the negative, you want drones, and in the positive, you want mines. But I don't, I don't want to, we, yeah, we, we rehashed on this the other time. Here's our stance on drones. Yeah, we don't use, uh, we don't use mines. Russia uses mines. We stopped indiscriminate mining in 1991. Nope. So does Ukraine. Sucks. Um, doesn't mean that literally thousands and thousands of people don't die as unintended consequences, even... You mean like with mines? Okay, so they so they didn't hear the mine thing. They're not going to talk about mines in this at all. Rumpel Forskin, you, you don't understand. Mines as a method of, of exercising military force are overwhelmingly destructive to civilian populations in a way that's most comparable to, like, chemical warfare. You literally just take entire countrysides and render them generationally unusable. Drone strikes are just a, a, a spooky way of bombing an area. You, drones are a legitimate, in the sense that they can be an effective and efficient like means of exercising military force. Mines are not. Like, it, it would be like, it's like comparing Agent Orange to like, targeted military strikes or like airstrikes or whatever they're, they're in such different categories how many people have died due to agent orange probably not that many but that doesn't mean we still haven't sorry by probably not that many i mean compared to like other global methods of, of killing people like like airstrikes or whatever like in terms of the total length of time agent orange has been used and the relatively low number of conflicts in which have been used you know but we would still never ever ever want to use agent orange ever because it's it's like uniquely f destructive to everyone. It's awful. Agent Orange deaths. Holy shit! Four hundred thousand people suffer death or permanent injury from exposure to Agent Orange. Jesus Christ! That was a higher number than I thought it would be, considering the fact that it was one conflict. But you know, furthermore, it's estimated that two million people have suffered from illnesses caused by exposure, and that half a million babies were born with birth defects. So if I said something like, I think drones are bad, but I don't think they're comparable to Agent Orange, like, hopefully people would get why I would say that. Like, that would make sense. Hopefully. In quote-unquote successful drone strikes, and let's not forget also a story which Fucking Vosh is on. seemingly incredibly um, ignorant to, which is the fact that Daniel Hale was recently literally sentenced to, what, 45 months in prison for exposing the fact that the civilian casualty rate for drones are, like, what is it, 9 in 10? Something like that? Um, yeah, it says, ahead of his sentencing this week, Hale filled, uh, filed an 11-page handwritten letter to the court detailing the motivations behind his actions in vivid detail. Hale yeah, Wash, why did you mention that? I mean, all I said was, I think mines are worse than drones. Can we address the anonymous mask in the background? Oh, holy shit. They have the f***ing Anon mask in the background. That's a classic right there. Hale recalled his own experience locating targets for American drone strikes. By some estimates, U.S. drone operations abroad conducted by both the military and the CIA have killed between 9,000 and 1,700 people since 2004, including as many as 2,200 children and multiple U.S. citizens. That's why I support Biden, because he uh, uh, damn near ended the drone war. No more malarkey. Um, with drone warfare, sometimes nine out of ten people killed are innocent. Wait, sometimes? Wait, they just said that overall nine out of ten people killed are innocent, but now it's sometimes? That's those. That's very different. Does sometimes mean there are some incidents, or like that's that's kind of statistically indeterminate? Hale said again. 
Daniel Hale being the heroic whistleblower who's currently in prison uh, for revealing the truth about our drone war. Again, something which apparently Vosh- Guys like this make me want to campaign for liberal. Well, liberals are preferable to fascists, right? Mines killed 43 and a half thousand between 2015 and 2020. 80% were civilians, 10% were civilians, nearly 10 times many and one fourth the time. Jesus is entirely ignorant to shockingly uh because i remember covering this on the vanguard when hale was imprisoned uh for his crime of revealing the truth oh 100 percent. look i think vosh must have still been drunk uh if i'm giving him any benefit of the doubt he like i think that was the title of the stream we're reacting to with all i said was that mines are worse than drones what, what did i do i lit the sentence the thing that i said before was I think drones increased net casualties, and then I said I don't think they're as bad as mines, and that's it. Oh my god. It was like, got drunk. So maybe you are just so drunk that you forgot everything that happened. Uh, I don't think so, though. That would be too generous. But it's absolutely insane. Yeah, as you said, Daniel Hill literally says you have to kill part of your conscience to do this job. He is... I mean that, that is what the military... As, as opposed to... Mind layers? Uh, wait, is the implication here that your conscience is clean if you're in a B-52 dropping thousands of cluster munitions over the villages of Laos? <laughs> What's the comparison? Like, yeah, the, 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 the virgin guilty drone pilot versus the Chad unperturbed farmland mind layer. I mean, if you listen to him talk, there was a long period of time when he was awaiting trial that he was out. He was working as a dishwasher why did i say right? mines were good yeah else. not that there's anything wrong with being a dishwasher but that's just saying the dude went from having quite a cushy job to you know working the most like entry-level working class job i just was working as a dishwasher again like a year ago i'm not talking shit um but it's just a big jump and then he was fired for trying to unionize i mean this dude uh, but when you listen to him talk uh he, he talks about the grief and the guilt and the unrelenting like stress and the you know and just the grieving i don't get it is the implication that there's no grief or guilt in other military aligned jobs. I, I feel like in a way, this is actually like kind of an apologetics for the military industrial complex, because the implication here is that drone strikes are like uniquely morally wrong, which sort of implies that the other stuff that we do is more okay. I don't get, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know. You said they're fascists, but aren't these guys similar to Kyle Kalinske? I mean, Kyle Kalinske's foreign policy takes have been, like, whiplashed around by fascists before, a la, like, Russian, like, gray zone type bullshit. Um, nah, these guys are tankies. Tankies are fascist. Whatever. I don't care. If we talk to them and I change my mind, maybe, but, like, I don't know. I, I, I'm, my charitability is variable, and I've never been given by these two a reason to be charitable that he's constantly doing because he you know of what he did the remorse he feels the responsibility he feels uh because of the things that he did who are you listening to if not the people who are like i did all of this shit and it devastates me and it makes it almost so it's so hard for me to live my life i was volunteering i, I did this because i was like i have to you know clear my conscience i will go to prison i will do whatever happens to me they can you know that's where that's the kind of horrible shit they were making daniel hale doing because this is a this is a horrible way of getting your takes on any kind of foreign policy or military, you could form any opinion at all by, like, listening for the people who sound the guiltiest or what they, like, you could do... Okay. He's a hero, and he has a conscience. He said, no, I'm going to put this information above my own well-being. It's just absurd that you would try and argue that. We, we The information that what we do I have argue? on drones is so damning, and we know that we don't even have, like, the half of it, guys. All the shit that we do, like, in via AFRICOM and in, you know, Northern Africa and all the places that we're doing shady shit, Central Africa, uh, crazy, guys. We're, we're killing people all the time, Ca civilians. I mean, there is no such thing as a safe drone strike. I mean, how many times do you remember when we were just in high school, Gavin, like, weddings being bombed to smithereens and and i remember actually if you would listen is he implying that a non-drone fired regular airstrike would have not blown up the wedding i have no idea what argument is being made here he seems to be making the art for i said mines are worse than drone strikes and his response seems to be that i think that drones aren't weapons and don't hurt people so he's like did you know drone strikes cause explosions? And I'm like, holy shit, really? Uh, did you know that explosions done 
in countries can uh can 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 kill civilians i didn't think about it that way i guess i guess they can um wow well, i have to reevaluate my priors Listen back as, were... as opposed to mines by the way it's with some sense on the Joe Rogan podcast, he would have Shane Smith on, who is not my favorite guy. He's a billionaire. He found advice, but even he would be there, being like, "Joe, listen to me. For every one of these dro uh, drone strikes that we bought, we drop over there. I we're think just we heard this. Did to this country, and as Matthew Hope put it, we killed millions of their civilians uh, while we incompetently Wait, tried to kill those people." He was like, "I would have signed right up." Are you kidding me? Every seventeen-year-old that's had their family killed, everything that they know destroyed by Americans, that it, isn't that just recruiting for your opposition? Of course it is. Right. Because nobody wants to be occupied. Um, nobody wants to be terrorized. And that's exactly what we went and did to this country. And as Matthew Hope put it, we killed millions of their civilians uh, while we incompetently tried to uh, bring justice for uh, what was admittedly a tragedy. Nobody's trying to underplay the tragedy of 9-11. OK, I'll just leave it. But the response that we had was just inconceivably uh, evil and uh, uh, just uh, psychotic. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, Vosh is trying to justify our extrajudicial assassination by saying, well, this was the second in command. He was responsible for 9-11. Um, and again, of course, obviously 9-11 was a horrific tragedy. Um, but what, 3,000 people were murdered that day? Um, the U.S. airstrikes have killed at least 22,000 civilians. Again, that's just civilians. Uh, uh, okay, so, so they should, okay, sure. So let the Taliban drone strike our officials. What? So, I don't understand what I don't understand what argument is being made here. I have I genu I have no idea what argument is being made here. I have I have no clue. Is is he is he saying the Taliban should get like a freebie and kill seven and one third of our guy? Well, I I don't know. I have no idea. Literally no clue at all. Um, if if the point he's making is that the Bush administration is full of war criminals, then I agree. He could just if he, if if that's what he means, then I agree. Um, yeah, billions that are recorded since nine eleven. Uh, this article is ten months old, so probably untold more have been killed since. Um, nah, Biden's really, really leaned off the drone war. Um, but yeah. Um, and again, that's a combination of U.S. drone and just regular airstrikes. Um, uh, in addition to the millions of people killed during the actual wars themselves. So under Vash's own logic, does Al-Qaeda or some other country, do they have the right to drone Joe Biden or Barack Obama? Like, Sure. Yeah, sure. Go for it. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I, it, is, it is interesting to me that the two people they mention are Obama and Biden and not Bush. That is a bit odd to me. The guy who started it. Or, or Trump, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they choose, yeah, I don't, that's just, I mean, it could be a coincidence, it's just, I mean, when I, when I think, like, wh where are the war criminals most responsible for Iraq? I feel like the easy go-to there is, is Bush. But, yeah, okay. These people are responsible for more civilian well, deaths the Bush, than the, Bush administration. the people behind 9-11, yeah. Like, wouldn't this logic also work that way too? Yeah, go yeah, for it. and it also says if you scroll down a little bit that the no the real number is probably way higher. So if you know the Guardian, oh my God, they keep repeating numbers, like the bare fucking minimum with what they can get away with publishing, right? As many as almost fifty thousand people, guys. I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually more than that. We have rained hell on so many countries. Okay, uh, this is probably just looking at like Afghanistan and Iraq, maybe. But you got to remember, we've been doing up shit everywhere, all over the world. Okay, and admittedly, our drone strike is Middle East and Africa mostly. I would, I would, I would love to hear this guy like substantiate those claims. The all over the world, I like, I not because I disagree necessarily. I just want to hear him like go over it. You know, like it's the Central African drone strikes. Uh, it, basically, that's where it is. But still, it, it, there's a there's a lot of shady shit that they won't even tell any of us about, where people are getting killed constantly uh you know dark, dark sites like it, it, it's crazy because you know sometimes you'll watch the joe rogan podcast right and then they'll just be like interviewing navy seals and shit right and those are the people that literally just went and did extrajudicial killings like do you want to know who's who go wait i just got an email back from them we're having an election watch party tonight so unfortunately we won't be able to make it let us know when you're streaming next oh maybe we'll get them tomorrow okay i'll respond later sorry not tonight guys 
goes and does that, that's Navy SEALs. They go out and they do that shit. Or, or like special ops, right? Uh, those are the people that go out there and like maybe they find it like, and that's if you do it boots on the ground, right? Uh, and they'll like hack up some terrorist uh, with no trial or, you know, they'll be judged during execution or whatever. What are we talking uh, about but, right now? I mean, we can't normalize this, guys. It, if you want to have a rule of law. And all Bo of the fifth column agrees with you because the deal with Afghanistan was that one guy was not supposed to be in Afghanistan. Yeah, I saw. So that guy, like, so the 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 agreement he wasn't supposed to re-enter the the country right i don't really care i just think it's funny when people who did 9 11 die people on the left are so gung-ho and so like ironic and so irony pilled unlike uh officer down awesome cop dead and then it's like guy who did 9 11 gets murked and it's like ah oh, you can't do that that's up. like yeah think of the law yeah i don't i don't care can't kill the 9 11 guy and all these people who pretend that they're like an hardcore constitutionalist too that go out there and like support uh, us to, oh he did 9-11 it's like bro we don't know that our intelligence is dog shit okay? no, wait first of all we have the best intelligence apparatus in the world by far second of all he took credit for it what do you mean we don't know that he was the, he's the he was the the, the second in command of the orc he said that he did what do you it's not like a vibe like he's okay yeah do we really know that 9-11 even happened? You know, US, US intel, uh, very unreliable. Okay, like, we can't just extrajudicially assassinate people. We can, we can try and put them on trial. We can put them on trial and then- Okay, extrajudicially extrajudici implies that they're not part of a terrorist group that took Afghanistan over from our allies and have previously attacked the United States. That's not, you, you can't, it's, it's, it's war. <laughs> It's this, this wasn't a police operation. <laughs> okay. And, you know, but I, I mean, you, there has to at least be something there. You can't just go around bombing the smithereens everywhere around it, trying to catch, uh, you know, a fish. It's like, it literally we didn't, we got them directly like, uh, in the Simpsons, right? Where they just like, fuck, psh, drop the thing in there. Oh, Al Qaeda, not the analogy, Taliban. But. Vosh is dumb and he thinks they're the same thing. True. Listen, okay, there are, um, there's America and anti-Americans. That's all I give a fuck about. Are they really doing a watch party? Ooh, I don't see a- Ooh, shit, Kalinsky. Stream with them. I don't see a watch party. Uh-oh, they're not backing out, are they? It wasn't a drone strike, it was a special roboplane operation. Yeah, true. Look at the Pelosi video. No, we've watched enough. Oh, hello, it's me. Vosh dogpiled by his audience after criticizing AOC? What? Oh god, that? Wait, how closely are they monitoring me? I guess it's, it's not Adam and Sitch. We're not we're not on here that much. Video about AOC's arrest. That was a whole that was a whole miscommunication. The hate watch. Okay, I didn't mean to watch all that. You were wrong on that one, Chief. No, I wasn't. I've never been wrong in my entire life, actually.